Hi there, welcome to this short series of videos where we're looking at building balsa model aeroplanes from plans. Now, this is the third and final video in this short series. The first video we were looking at plan selection and the second video we were looking at how we get that information from the plans onto the balsa so we can actually cut it out and create the components we need to start building that aeroplane. Now in this video we're going to be moving away from uh, working with balsa or mostly working with balsa and we're going to think about some of the other gear uh, that uh, for want of a better word that we associate with building model aeroplanes. So like the landing gear, um, where we actually put the servos and the radio and the battery. So all that kind of control gear that we put inside the aeroplane. Uh, canopies, how we build canopies, where we can get canopies from. And we'll touch briefly on, on things like cows. Now the first thing I'd like to talk about is the actual uh, control gear, the radio gear and the battery that we put inside our planes to control them, or at least in our radio control planes. Now, when we get plans like this, we're often given just kind of rough areas of where you can put some of your electronics. So we've got receiver area, we've got servo area, and we've got a section here that says battery. Now before we dive in and start trusting that, and putting the, the components in these areas or building them in, what I would suggest is that we actually have a look at the aeroplane we've built and actually uh, calculate or have a look at where the natural CG is starting to fall. Now, let me explain that a little bit further. If you have a look at this, this is a, an Avanti Patterns plane, the first one that I built. Now here I've mocked it up and I've got the ailerons on, I've got the, the, uh, the, the elevators and everything really that is the wooden components and the wheels of that aeroplane. And the only real thing left to do is to put in the radio gear. But before I want to put it in, I'm thinking about uh, where it can go, but I need to find out the CG of that aeroplane or, or just roughly the CG whether the plane's going to be nose heavy or whether it's going to be tail heavy before I put that equipment in. Now with this Avanti I had quite a large engine I increased the nose size which is something that I talked about in the last video and that all gave me a slightly nose heavy plane so I wanted to try and get the radio gear back as far as possible and if we look at the plans here, it's saying battery area here. I actually ended up with putting the battery right back here, as far as I could put it in this, in this area. And I had the servos way back. And I still had to put just a small amount of lead, I think it was about 20 grams, something like that, right down in the far tail to get it to balance. Because the combination of the slightly heavier engine and the longer nose just made it that little bit nose heavy. And the last thing we really want to do is to be adding weight to our planes, whether we're adding it up in the nose or in the tail like I had to. And the best thing we can do is, when we've got that plane up, uh, mocked up, we can see how the, the plane is sitting with the engine in and whether it's going to be nose heavy or not. And that will allow us to move those components particularly the battery which is the heaviest part of it right back if it's going to be nose heavy or as suggested here right to the front if it's looking like it's going to be tail heavy and you have to remember that the balsa that we use as we talked about this in the first video the balsa that we use can have a real impact on the actual C uh, where the CG falls and if we've got heavy bolster in the tail, we may end up with a heavy tail and have to bring everything forward. So I'm talking about finding the, the natural seed, CG of where the plane is when we built it. But as we look on the plans, we have a specified CG and that is what we need to be aiming for by moving this 
electronics and controlled gear around within the aeroplane. So it's a really good tip to do that first before wasting time fitting the servos and the battery and then trying to move them around when we find our plane won't hit that CG specified. Now let's talk about canopies. A lot of the planes that we build are going to need a canopy. Not all planes, some of them have balsa sides, balsa windscreens, some of the, the, the more basic trainers. But if we're going to build a fairly detailed model, the chances are it will need a canopy. Now, things like uh, cubs, Piper Cubs, we can wrap the plastic around. It's a, quite an easy job, or can be. But when we've got something like this Avanti Patterns plane, it's actually quite a detailed shape. It's quite a nice, long, sweeping canopy. And we're given a little bit of information on the shape here and, uh, and just here. Now, we can see on the plan, I'm not sure whether you can read that, but it says IN Canopy by World Engines. So it's actually telling us who makes the canopy, which might sound fairly easy enough, but there's a, there's a catch. These plans were actually made uh, or printed, uh, designed, printed, nearly 50 years ago. I think they're 1974. So I'm fairly sure that you can't get this canopy new anymore. You might get a second-hand one or one that would perhaps do. But if you're anything like me, I like doing things myself. I like building my own canopies. And this is something that can be done quite easily. It's quite within the scope of what we can do as model makers. Now, this is a plug that I made for my Avanti. And if I just get, I'm building the second one, as I've said, because I gave the first one to a good friend. And this is the, uh, the a balsa canopy I've made, a plug. And you can see how nicely that fits on. And this was a plug, i just put this back up on the wall so it doesn't get damaged. Now this was a plug I, I made when I built the first one and by using this plug we can actually shrink a plastic pot bottle around the canopy. If we cut off the end we can slip it in, pack the canopy tight against the top of the bottle and we can shrink it with a head, an air gun. Now you can produce some really good canopies like this. First time maybe not, it takes a little bit of practice but once you get a few basic things sorted, uh, you know, how you do it, it can, be, it can produce really rewarding results. You need to choose your bottles carefully. This is actually a, a, uh, from a, a fizzy drink, a, a caffeine and sugar free fizzy drink. And the bottles are quite smoky, which I, I quite like, as opposed to being totally clear. But you need to get out there and choose your bottle. And when you've got your bottle, you need to avoid the glue down the side and I think there is a, a stamp on this, an etch, yep there's an etch stamp just on the side here by the seam. So you need to position your canopy in there and get it right to get that nice canopy. And you probably have to make two or three, so you have to drink quite a few bottles of this. Now if you want to see a more detailed uh, uh, video of me making canopies with this method then have a look in the description below and there'll be a link to that. Now this is a, uh, put the Avanti aside, this is a, a, a plug I made, the, both these plugs by the way are made from balsa, I've just laminated uh, pieces of balsa. This is a plug from a, a recent build series I did, the uh, New Era 3 Revisited and again just a pot bottle. We are limited to can canopy size by the size of bottle we can get and to be honest this is probably about the maximum that I can get away with. But if you're making smaller ones like uh, this one, this is a small Spitfire canopy I've made from a, which is for a flight test Spitfire. A friend of mine gave me a hardwood plug and I just used some small bottles. This is uh, the canopy that hasn't actually been cut out yet. But trust me, it's a very nice canopy and will be great for my flight test foam Spitfire, foam board Spitfire, when I get it done. So, making your own canopies is great, but you can look on the market and find canopies that are for sale by different manufacturers. 
But if you want my advice, go out and make your own. It's great fun and a real sense of achievement. Okay, well let's talk about landing gear. Most of the planes we built probably have some kind of landing gear, particularly if you're building them from balsa and don't want to do any hard belly landings. Now, we generally have tri-gears like this, or we have some kind of tail dragger. Now, the nose gear is usually something we can get from a local hobby shop, model shop, quite easily. And I would recommend doing that far easier than trying to make your own. And what I would suggest as well is just buying the straight leg with the, uh, the spring in the middle, the suspension spring in the middle rather than trying to get one with a bend for the wheel. I usually find that the wheel is, n the, the, the bend for the axle is not in the right place. And I generally find I have to try and compensate for that by moving the mounting point of the nose gear. I mean, this nose gear here is, is specified, but to be honest, nose gears are fairly standard things. You just have to take note of the thickness. And in bending the axle here, I just put it in a vise and tap it with a hammer close to the bend while it's in the vise and get that nice tight right angle uh, bend. And I have never ever had one of them fail, I've never had it fracture from bending it. I've always had it, it, it just work fine. So I would suggest straight leg, bend it yourself. Now, if we're gonna use tail gear, then again, very easy to get from a model shop and to choose. There's different ones depending on how you want to do it. What we usually have issues with is the actual main landing gear itself. And these generally come in an aluminium leg. Uh, we can have uh, carbon fibre legs specified, or we can have some kind of arrangement made up of music wire, whether that's like on, a, on an old Warburg biplane or like we've got on the Avanti here. Now, if it's a wire one, we can just use music wire and make it ourselves. It's really easy to do. We can bend it in the vise. It never, it, it, it's never failed on me, as I said, having done that. I mean, this is, um, I think this is 10 gauge. Yep, this is 10 gauge uh, music wire, which is what is specified here on the Avanti, but sometimes smaller planes will go down to, uh, to a smaller gauge. Now we've got on the plans here a detailed uh, outline showing the size and the measurements so it couldn't be easier for us. <clears throat> Excuse me. It's a little bit more tricky if we're working with aluminium and we want to make an aluminium uh, frame like I did here on my Das Ugly stick. Now the aluminium I could get when I made this was really, uh, really soft. I couldn't get good quality aluminium. So I, you can see I've put in some um, stainless steel cross wires to give that bracing. And you know what? I never had that uh, 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 undercarriage, that landing gear bend, despite the aluminium being quite soft. It was really braced well. And if you want to see a link to more details of how I did that, I've done it with a Piper cover as well. Have a look in the link below. It's just where I was living at the time, you couldn't get good quality aluminium. What we should be using is dural aluminium, which is a, I think it's a, a copper alloy, which is used for planes because of its tensile strength or its, its strength anyway. And I think with the local international, sorry, the, the, the more recent international designation for alloy, I think it's 2014 or 2024. And it's a hard aluminium that is good for um, making our undercarriage. Now if we want to go out and buy something from a hobby shop then that's fine. The problem I have with that is finding something that actually fits the measurements and the dimensions that I need for the model I'm making. I've got a trainer I'm building and I tried to see if there was anything I could buy that would be cheaper and easier and I couldn't and in the end I'm just gonna to have to make my own. And you know what? It's easy and it's really rewarding. So don't be put off by making your own undercarriage. Now I couldn't do this series without talking about cowls. Now, I, if you've seen any of my build blogs, uh, build series, you'll know that 
uh, quite a few of the planes that I build don't actually need a cowl. This Avanti is a classic example. It's a balsa nose that's profiled and the engine sits within it. And to be honest, that is the kind of plane that I much prefer. Also with my new Era 3 revisited build, exactly the same. Uh, my Das Ugly Stick doesn't have any kind of um, uh, cowl at all. The engine just sticks out the front on, a, um, on an engine mount. And that's kind of the way I like doing it. But I have built canopies before, and if you have a look at my um, Piper Cub J3, you'll see I actually made a fiberglass cowl. And if you look in the description below, there will be a link to how I did that. And if you have a look at this, this is the cowl I made. And first of all, I made a balsa plug. I cast it into, to make a, 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 a female mold. I made a male plug, female mold, and then I use that to create a fiberglass uh, uh, cowl. Now we can buy our cowls as well. This, for example, is a, a, a cowl that I bought for a, it's a Cessna 120, and I bought this from Sarik Hobbies in the UK. And they're not cheap, but they're not really expensive. And, you know, it's a great cowl, and it would probably cost me more to make it myself. Having said that, there's a lot of fun and reward in making your own. And I really enjoyed making the cowl for my uh, Piper Cub J3. But you can buy these fiberglass cowls. And, and often you can make something do from another plane, perhaps. It depends how scale you want to be and how critical it is that it looks just right. But as I said, I'm not a great one for making cows, but if you have a look at the link in the description below, you'll see how I did the fiberglass one for the Piper Cub. But this is definitely what I prefer. Well, I hope this short series of videos has shown you how easy it can be to build from plans and how rewarding it can be as well. Whether you're building a glider, free flight, or a beautiful patterns plane like this Avanti here. So thanks for watching and good luck in building from plans in the future. It really is so rewarding when you get out there and see it fly for the first time.